Welcome once again to Cabezonico. This is the first time we're doing an episode in English. Um, I'm very happy to have this guest with us. Um, he comes from South Africa, but I met him in India. His name is Suda Cardas. Um, it was a really cool story the way I met him. I met him in a, this academy in India called Vedanta Academy. I went last year on this journey of two months and a half where... Where for personal reasons, I decided to go to India to expand my my consciousness, to know more about spirituality in general. And I ended up in that academy, which was a two-week experience that changed my life. I went there because um, on my on my path, it was put this uh, beautiful person called Anu Seti, which uh, gave me like this schedule to do certain spiritual things in different parts of India. And uh, she's the one who rec recommended me to go to Vedanta Academy. Uh, I asked her, what am I going to find there? And she, she just laughed and she said, you will see, you will see. And uh, when I went to Vedanta Academy, uh, the first two days were a little shaky. I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Mm -hmm. But when the time went by, I, I, I realized the, the reason why she sent me there. And then months later, uh, I met a friend over there months later. Uh, he was touring, doing a tour around the world, uh, sharing what is Vedanta Academy in different places, in different companies, in different areas. And uh, we made an appointment and he decided to come to Punta Cana and he just gave a lecture in Kigai Learning Center. And today we have it as a guest, our first English spoken uh, guest, Sudakar, welcome. Thank you for having me, Eduardo. How are you, man? Very good. Very good. Good. I'm really happy to, to have you here. It's uh, really cool how we met in the other side of the world in these circumstances. And suddenly you are you are here in, uh, in Cabezonico podcast. Isn't it wonderful how these meetings yeah. work and how our demands, inner demands for knowledge and seeking unites people. Yes, yes, it's true. How how when you change your vibration and when you change this these patterns or you change that, it's the change it's uh, imminent i mean it comes and i'm i'm so happy of of me uh, opening to to these changes and by that uh, knowing people like you that that you share this this positivity and this knowledge uh, i'm i'm very happy that that you are here thank you so tell me um what uh, first of all give me a little glimpse of you who who's sudakar where are you from Uh, how old are you? Uh, like a quick synopsis, uh, a quick yeah, synopsis of who you are. Okay. Uh -huh. My name is Sudhakar. I'm born and brought up uh -huh. in South Africa. Okay. And I come from a comfortable uh, background where our family has been in business for three generations. Wow. What type of business? Public transport, so buses. Buses, okay. So our family operates a fleet of buses for the last 80 years in 80 South years. Africa. Wow. And in South Africa, you know, South Africa had that apartheid mm -hmm. regime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we were the first non-white bus operators in oh, South Africa. nice, nice. So our family is quite well known. Uh -huh. And being the eldest of the the next generation, the third generation, mm -hmm. I was being groomed to take over the family business. Okay. So the idea was finish school. I did well in school mm -hmm. and go and study in the U S at Wharton and come back and bring these business skills to the family business. Okay. The only problem is I wasn't consulted on this. <laughs> Nobody asked you. <laughs> the uh -huh. contract was already there. Yeah. My life plan was laid out in front of me uh -huh. and I was okay with it. Okay. I was fine with it. You didn't I, question it. You say I didn't question it. It's what it is. Uh -huh. But but the teacher mm -hmm. of Vedanta Academy, mm -hmm. Swami Parthasarathy, mm -hmm. he is a family friend of ours. He's a family friend of yours. So oh. he knows my grandparents from the 1950s. Wow. So when my grandparents used to go to India, Chennai, mm -hmm. they would stay with him. Okay. And when he started lecturing as a Swami uh -huh. and visited South Africa... Okay. My mother said, Swami, why don't you stay with our family? So we grew up uh -huh. with this gentleman staying in our home for one or two weeks a year. Oh, so, so he, he stayed at your house when, when you were younger. Okay. We thought he's an uncle. Okay. Like just a family friend. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. 
we knew something was special about him. Of course. He didn't give us lectures. He never gave us one word of advice, but he was fun. He was uh-huh. lighthearted. He would talk to us even though we were kids. And uh, we knew something's different about this person. Like yes. why is he so happy? Uh-huh. And then one year my mother forced us to go to the academy. We did not want to go to India. We had some preconceived notions there going to be cows everywhere. Mm-hmm. People in the academy will be shaven-headed and chanting all the time. Yeah. We had some ideas of India. Yes. We went there. By say we who are we? We are three brothers. The, the three of you went at the same time? No. Oh, okay. The youngest brother was still too young. Okay. So the two of us went at the mm-hmm. ages 12 and 11. Wow. You were really young when you went to the academy for the first time. For a holiday. Okay. My mother decided, children, for your holiday, go and spend one month in the academy. Okay. So we went. And uh, it was a much older group at the time. The average age was about 25, but we loved it. Yeah. They had special classes for us. We played lots of sport. Uh-huh. I'm not sure how much we understood. We enjoyed it. Okay. So we did the course. Uh, so we visited after four visits. I decided I need to figure out what I want to do in life. Okay. So because of the introduction of Vedanta in my life, I started questioning, what do I want? What am I designed for? What is the best me look like? Mm-hmm. And I found that even in school, I started to enjoy history, art, drama, okay. And I wanted to explore that as well. Okay. So I realized that if you put in effort, hard work, mm-hmm. you can be successful in anything. Yes. But I wanted to be something that when I'm in my 40s, this is what I was thinking at mm-hmm. 18. When in, you are like right now. Yeah, when <laughs> right now. That's why it's interesting. Yes. When I'm in my 40s, I do not want to wake up one morning and go, "Oops." Yes. I'm in the wrong place. Yes. I want to find something I look forward to doing. Okay. So I said I'll go to the academy for one year. Okay. Now the academy runs a three-year course. Three year. Uh-huh. I said, let me try it out for one year and then I'll go to US. But on my third day in the academy, Swamiji was giving a lecture and it just clicked. There is so much to learn about life. I need to do the three years. Okay. And now Eduardo, it's 24 years. 24 years. I am 42. You decided to stay. I decided to stay. Not everybody stays, yes. but for me, this was it. Now, that question is going to come the decision of why did you decide to stay, but first for the audience that doesn't know, can you explain us um uh, what is exactly Vedanta? What's the Vedanta Academy? Uh how can you describe all that to somebody that has absolutely no idea what it is like I was a few months ago so vedanta is a philosophy from india mm-hmm. where great sages great thinkers they went into the mountains in the himalayas mm-hmm. you know the mountain range of yes. the himalayas yes. they went there and they studied life okay but they studied life scientifically okay and this subject they say is at least 6000 years old okay before it was written it was passed down verbally okay and we don't really know who was the author okay because they didn't put their names to it and it was just passed generation to generation and anybody who collaborated or put a new perspective on the philosophy or on the truth became part of vedanta okay so you have texts from 6000 Years ago, 3000 BC, you have texts from uh, 2 AD, 8th century, 13th century. Those, those, uh, all that information, all those scripts are linked to the uh, Hinduist religion. No, it it's it's predates. It's pre. Okay. It predates all religion. Wow. It is a philosophy of the human being. Okay. What is the purpose of human life? It okay. was there before religion. Okay. I, what, when I was in India, I I have the idea that the Vedas are are like are holy books from the Hinduism uh religion, right? Is that right? Does those Vedas have something to do with the Vedanta? It does. It does. Okay. So, Hinduism is based okay on different texts. Okay. 
And the Vedas predates that. Okay. So the idea of the Vedas is they are these encyclopedias of India. Yes. There are four Vedas. Yes. And they have different sciences. Ayurveda. Uh-huh. So they have different sciences that they talk about. Okay. Different types of practices as well. Okay. But the last portion of the four Vedas mm-hmm. is where the philosophy is. Okay. That's called the Upanishads. Upanishads. So uh-huh. the end portion of the Vedas, uh-huh. another word for end in Sanskrit is Anta. Uh-huh. So Veda, Anta. Anta. Uh, that's why. Vedanta. Okay. The okay. end portion of the Vedas, the Upanishads, is where the philosophy is from. Okay. Okay. Now, so so it's, it's like to translate it in an easy way, it would be like a manual to go through life. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You got it. Okay. It's like a manual to go through life. Okay. Because Vedanta is, yes, end of the Vedas, but Veda also means knowledge. Okay. So it's like the end of knowledge, the complete knowledge or manual for life. Okay. Okay. And it's a knowledge that takes us to being more productive, happier, fulfilled versions of ourselves. I see. Yeah, when I was there, I stayed there for for two weeks, and most of the people that were staying there were in the three year program that that you just mentioned. And correct me if I'm wrong, but those three year program it's a time where people go there and they study basically all the books that uh, that were written under the Vedanta Academy, correct? Like like manuals, and they go those three years in a row without days off and without vacation. Uh, so they learn all that information, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, when I went there, I, I was like part of them for two weeks. It was a fantastic experience because even though it's not even close to the three years, you get the tools to take it home and read those books. You can buy it on, on Amazon or you can even subscribe to, to the e-learning. Get, e-learning. Now, why did you decide to stay, to stay longer than the three years? What happened? When you were about to turn the third year or maybe when you turned the third year, what happened that you decided to stay and basically forfeit all this kind of uh, comfortable life that you already had basically there in South Africa with your family, your business? I mean, like I would say that m- most of people would say, oh, no, I am flushed by money. I'm flushed by status. I will go back to my family business. I will run it. But you decide, you say, no. I'm going to stay here for, I don't know when, what happened with you? So it's not like I gave up all the comforts of home or the family life. I didn't look at it like that. Okay. I looked at what's making me happier. I see. And what I found is that this subject, Uh it's like when you're improving your business, Okay. the thrill you get from optimizing your business, from making it more efficient, leaner, you get inspired by that. Or for people who are building the body, Mm -hmm. how inspired they get about making the body more efficient, healing, repairing, building, they get inspired by that. Yes. Imagine if you can work with your inner personality, your mind and your intellect, Mm -hmm. where you are improving and refining that. Mm -hmm. The kind of satisfaction that you get from that beats everything else. So I wasn't leaving behind that lifestyle. Okay. I was taking up I this see. higher lifestyle that was so enchanting. I see. But the idea of it is that you've got to find out what are you designed for. You could be an engineer. Uh-huh. You could be a business person and still work on your personality. Mm-hmm. You can take any field and develop yourself in that field. I see. But for me, I realized after three years, because I took the time to understand myself my interests were public speaking mm-hmm. philosophy you, you're, thinking. you're very good for public speaking yeah i was uh, <laughs> thank you very much uh, i was fortunate my mother sent me to speech and drama classes when oh, we were young nice. we enjoyed it uh-huh. and then i took up debating okay and i was national debating champion wow so i had a skill in yes. the subject and i enjoyed it but what do you speak on uh-huh I enjoyed philosophy. I see. I enjoyed service. I okay. needed a service element. You have that inside of you. That, that the was ser- there oh, okay. to give, to yeah, share. Yeah, yeah. When did you realize that? Do you have like a moment of realization in your life that that service was your path? It wasn't a moment of realization. Mm-hmm. I think right through. Right from, through. From, uh, 
I think, you know, sometimes it's in you where you just see greatness in people who share. Uh-huh. Because I think to do it by yourself, to achieve success and where you're the only person mm-hmm. there enjoying the success, it it didn't inspire me. I see. Man, I don't know if this coincidence, I think it's not, but many people that I met in India that are very involved with the, with the philosophy or with the spirituality, they mention a lot the service part. Like m- most of them that I talk to, is like the serve, but like that to serve, to give, to give away something uh, that life is about giving, not taking. I mean, I, many of them have told me that word. Is it something that comes a lot with the culture? Uh, is it something that comes with the philosophy that they have in India? What, what do you think about that? It comes along with the philosophy. It comes with the philosophy. But we can also, through our own experience, mm-hmm. discover it. Yes. What the philosophy says is that the purpose of life is to find out your real identity, mm-hmm. that spirit within. Mm-hmm. You find that spirit within, you the will self. realize the self, the self. It, but the big self, yes. not the ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. real Eduardo. Yes. Eduardo is just a name your mm-hmm. parents gave you. You know, and now you would say, who is Eduardo? He is... You know, uh, doing interviews, he's doing podcasts, yes. he is a father. No, no, you were something before the father. Mm-hmm. You were something before the partner. Mm-hmm. We have these different roles that we play, but who's the real person behind it all? That's yes. the spirit. Yes. And that spirit is full. That spirit is blissful. Mm-hmm. And that's the purpose, to find that out. But how do we find it out? That's That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh-huh. So the, the way to go about it... Mm-hmm is by getting higher desires. By getting high, higher desires. Higher desires. What and do you mean? The desire to get closer to the spirit. Mm-hmm. And the way to change our thoughts is to redirect it from the ego, to redirect it from all the things that are pulling us, the material things, redirect it towards service mm-hmm. with the body. Yes. Right? Love. Mm-hmm. With the heart, with Mm -hmm. the mind, we Mm -hmm. say, with the feelings. Yes. And knowledge by Mm e-learning, studying the Mm -hmm. subject. So when you have these three together working, service, love, knowledge, you get closer to finding the spirit. Wow. The whole of India is based on this philosophy. I see. And that's why it's there in the people. Yeah. You know, the word, another word for India is called Bharat. Bharat, yeah. So Bhar means light. Light. And, yeah, uh-huh. light. Light. And rath or rathaha uh-huh. means to revel, means to enjoy. Oh, to enjoy light. So it's talk about it's talking about people who are enjoying the light of self-realization. I see. They're enjoying enlightenment. That's what that country is about. So every part of it is trying to take the community people mm-hmm. towards enlightenment. Okay. Now, at this point of your life, do you identify more with the Indian culture rather than the South African? Oh, very interesting question. Mm -hmm. Because at this time, I have spent more years living in India than South Africa. You're in the half of your life more more in India than in South Africa. So how do you feel? You know, so uh, I would say uh, I can definitely see parts of myself that are South African. Yes. And I'm identifying, yes, as stronger with parts of India because of the philosophy. Yes. And that's the reason why I am staying in India. Yes. But in terms of, um, as a, as a person, I'm looking at absorbing all the best things in the world. Yes. So if I see something in Dominican Republic that is beautiful, Mm -hmm. I'll take that. I'll take it. So I'll have a little bit of Dominican in me when I leave. (laughs) Or if I go to, uh, if I go to Mexico, Mm -hmm. the hospitality. Yes. I'll take that part with me. Yes. If I go to uh, certain parts where um, it could be in Africa, just the the ability to laugh yes. and uh, to to laugh so purely and without being self-conscious. Yes. Beautiful. So take these qualities. So the, the beauty of Vedanta is you don't get attached to anything. Exactly. And when you're not attached, you can enjoy and absorb everything. Yes. So whatever is positive, you just 
Use you that. Take it. And you, you, you know, so you, so I won't say I'm South African, I'm Indian. I just say I'm a human being, a work in progress. I, I, I like a lot how you uh, linked my question with attachment. Because my question is an attachment question. I mean, what do you feel more attached to being rather Indian or South African? And yeah, it's true. I remember that it's that um, concept of attachment is a concept that it's mentioned very often in the academy. Like wherever you see it's a likes, dislikes, attachments, aversions. I mean, to, to be in the present and to enjoy. So yeah, we are, we are, we humans are very, uh, We depend, but no, no, not depend. We're thinking a lot about attachments uh, and, uh, and all the time, all the time, all the time. That uh, doesn't let us enjoy the present, right? It's like if I ask you, Eduardo, where do you feel at home? Where do I? It's it's not where. It's maybe with who sometimes. With who? Yeah. With who? Yeah. Because that's where the attachment is. Exactly. But that means when you are not with the person. Uh -huh. You feel not at home, not at home, uncomfortable, uh -huh. missing the person. Yes. So you've tied yourself to that person. Yes. Some people tie it to a place. Mm -hmm. Some people tie it to the bed. It says, I'm, I can only sleep in my own bed. Yeah. I only can go to the bathroom in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's home? Is it yourself home? That will be the answer. That would be the best answer. That would be the best answer. That's what I'm trying. Yes. It's like word. wherever you are, uh -huh. you're at home because you're not attached to anything in particular. I see. You're attached yeah, to the yeah, spirit. Yeah, to the spirit. And wow, that, that's, that's, that's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's powerful. A, that's powerful, but, but very high to achieve, <laughs> no? It's, uh, well, it's not impossible, but you need a lot of practice and a lot of yeah. awareness and consciousness. A lot of people give up mm -hmm. because they think that is too high. Mm -hmm. Start small. Yeah. Reduce the things that we don't need to tie ourselves to. Mm -hmm. Some people tie themselves to the weather. Yeah. Oh, sun is shining, smiling. Yes. Oh, oh it's raining. Yeah, terrible, yeah, 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 terrible. Yeah, yeah. Reduce your attachment to the weather. Well, If it's you, raining. You live in India with a nice weather and, and I live in Dominican Republic with nice weather. People that live in Europe, they are always concerned about the weather. Like, uh, oh, have you checked the weather? Is it going to rain? Is it going to be sunny? All the time. All It's the like time. running commentary. Yes. I went to Finland and they were talking about, oh, Sudhakar, I am sorry about the weather. So no, it's it's good, you know, because we in Dominican Republic, yeah. South Africa and India, too much sun. Yes. So yes. we don't value the sun. Yes. They're like, oh no, you know, hopefully the sun will come out on the weekend. Yes. And then I go there on Tuesday. And you are, I hopefully don't. <laughs> I, I want to enjoy the the, the, sh the, the shadow. <laughs> saying, oh, you know, let's sit in the sun for our meal. <laughs> I like, no, it's okay. You know, let's sit indoors. So yeah, they value it so much, but they place their happiness on it. Yes. And their mood. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need to do that. So we can cut out certain attachments. Yes, yes. There is, a, I remember when I was studying, there is like, um, a, this teacher told us a theory that people's uh, emotions are very linked to the geographical place where they were born. And they say, look, people that it's in, uh, in, in that, that they were born in the cold areas like North America, Europe, they are colder in, in their emotions. And they are more workaholics. They are like ants, like preparing for the winter, working, working, working. And they may have another economical structure, like better. People normal, normally in the north of the countries, north of the, of the world, the economies are better. But also the emotions and the state of happiness are lower because you are like just worrying about work. Uh, you come to a place, maybe like Dominican Republic, where the weather is nice, where people back in the day, they didn't have to hunt, they used to have to grab a banana because there are bananas all over. So food is all over, weather is nice. People are happier. They don't work as much as in the parts mm -hmm. of the North, but you are happier. Like people that live in the sunny places have like this, uh, uh, their emotions lean toward more, the, more, more to happiness. Uh, so it was very interesting for me to listen to that because it kind of makes sense. I think there's truth to mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. because it's just so much harder mm -hmm. where it's colder. Yes. Just to survive, just to have food, yeah. also to to move. You've got yeah. to move the snow out of your yeah, driveway yeah, yeah, just yeah. to yeah. get through. Yeah. So you're constantly struggling against yeah. the elements. Always there's a mission. But like, yeah, with warmer places, it's, ah. it's easier to be yeah. more carefree. But this is the idea. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be defined by it. Mm -hmm. You can still be happy in Europe. Yeah. Or yeah, in yeah, a yeah. Scandinavian country yeah. or in Canada or US. Yes. 
And that's what we want to do. Yes. We want to tell people that it doesn't have to be dependent on the environment or the people Correct. around them. Correct. It's in you. Yeah. But we have to learn the technique of how does you contact the world. Yes. Relate with the world. If you work on the relationship, it can be a beautiful experience. Now people are only working on the world. They're not working on their technique to connect with the world. I see. Now, how, how talk, talking about relationships, how has Vedanta uh, changed or shaped the way you interact with your personal relationships? And I don't want to be very personal, but maybe... No, get personal. But, but, More interesting. But I'm interested in the mm. relationship you have with your wife. I mean, because hey, for me, it's a really cool story. You met her at the academy almost 20 years ago, right? When you were really young, you decided to get married. You live together in the academy. You travel with her all around the world, sharing uh, what is the Vedanta philosophy. So, how has the Vedanta has shaped that uh, relationship you have you have uh, with your close relationships, especially with her? So, it has been very helpful having this philosophy because it's given me information to go back to. Mm -hmm. when I realized I need to work on the relationship. Mm -hmm. So especially in the first few years, there were disagreements. There were uh, things we didn't see eye to eye on. Mm -hmm. So I needed to work on that. Mm -hmm. And I needed to figure out how do we disagree? Mm -hmm. It's okay to disagree. Yes. But how do we talk about it? Yes. How do we communicate it and how do we move forward from it? Mm -hmm. So that requires a lot of thinking and a lot of inner work yes. to figure out. So that's what um, Vedanta gives us. It gives us the tools to help articulate it. And I think the, the main one is we are fortunate to Vedanta because it gave us the base mm -hmm. that both of us were looking at improving ourselves independently. We both want to be better human beings. Mm -hmm. And then we realized we have different needs where a partner would be useful. So it could be for companionship, mm -hmm. it could be for intimacy. So it would be better to do this journey together. I see. So we got together. So the value base is the same and the things that are important. Now people get married because they enjoy the same movies. Mm -hmm. They both enjoy Italian food. It should be something <laughs> a little bit more Deeper. solid, a foundation. Yes. Then you know you set for mm -hmm. longevity. And ours was, we're both trying to move towards enlightenment. We're both trying to move towards evolution. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we are very different people. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Yes. Our personalities yes, are different. Yes, are very different. I'm more introverted. Mm -hmm. Avani yes. is more... Yeah, 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 she's yeah. Uh, sparking. Sparking, yeah. She's yeah. Sparking. It's funny, it's very funny. Yeah, very funny yes. and uh, lots of emotions yes. for me. Like I'm more thoughtful, I'm more on the intellect side. Yes. Avan is more on the mind side. Yes. So what we realized is those parts aren't important mm -hmm. because you could have very similar personalities, but there's always going to be some difference. Mm-hmm. And we get involved in the difference and we make it into a big deal. Mm -hmm. So you can be very different, but since your base is the same, you've got something to work towards. I see. So the work that both of us needed to do was to accept the differences. Mm -hmm. Let you be you and me be me. And love that. Yes. Instead of wanting to change the other person. Yes. They're on their journey. If you can support it, support it. But you're not there to correct or influence their journey. They're on their own journey mm -hmm. with you. Same thing is with the other person. They've got to accept like you're on the journey. So what made a huge difference in the relationship was trying to connect with the person. Mm -hmm. See them as they are without wanting to change them. Mm -hmm. Instead of how I would like them to be. I see So then I'm relating to that person in front of me. The things I like, the things I don't like, okay, it's a package, like weather. We're yes. saying sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's rainy. Learn how to enjoy both. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've gotten better on in I the see. relationship. I see. You know, it doesn't take two people to make a relationship work. It takes one person with an intellect. 
You 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 think so? If you have two people uh-huh. using the intellect, it's heaven. It's heaven. So that's well, what I've been doing. You think well that with one, it's enough. One person is enough. Wow! Because you'll know exactly how to meet them, how to relate with them. Yeah. To keep the relationship strong. Yes. Now, do you do you uh, think uh, that in this philosophy of Vedanta? Do you think there are some parts that may look um, like a little controversial for the rest of the world that is not involved of that or or, or challenging? I think at a superficial level, uh-huh. people might see the uniform mm-hmm. as something to be concerned about. Mm-hmm. But all it is is traditional Indian clothing. Mm-hmm. And the idea of the uniform is that when you come there, mm-hmm. you don't have to think about what you're wearing. Uh-huh. You know, am I going to wear this T-shirt? Am I going to match, accessorize? Don't spend effort on things that don't matter in that place. I see. Use that energy and thinking to get to know yourself better. I see. So the idea is remove distraction. So that's the reason for the uniform. Okay. So I think if a if a person does come to the academy, they're going to have questions. Yes. But the beauty of the academy is it says, ask your questions. Yes. Don't accept anything. Question. See if it makes sense. There's a reason why there are different disciplines, protocols, why it's done what we do and it's a nice symbol of what the philosophy is yes so when you see that place the students are doing everything like a swiss train yes <laughs> you can tell what time it yeah, is I, I by saw, what the students yeah, are doing yeah, they, they go to do what they are they, what they went to do you know everybody's very focused laser sharp like These are, time. these are 19 year olds, 19 yeah, year olds, yeah, 20 yeah. year olds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what saw. a head start in life. Yeah. It's like, uh, like you said, like the average age, I would say is like in early twenties, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, do you, do you feel like, uh, do you feel like there's a difference for you between practicing Vedanta and teaching? Because you are a teacher. I mean, you're a teacher. You are traveling all over the world teaching this. So what, what would be the difference or how do you link it? Or what's the benefit of being a teacher of this philosophy for you? So initially I didn't want to be a teacher. You didn't want to. Yeah. I wanted really? to just focus on studying oh. and improving myself. Okay. And, um, so I, I, that was where my attention, uh, I wanted to focus on, but my teacher told me, no, Swami, go, Swami, 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 uh-huh. so Swamiji told me, go and teach to be a better student mm-hmm. because when you're teaching, you realize when you are clear and when you are not clear. Mm-hmm. And perhaps when you're saying something, it could be said better. Mm-hmm. So maybe you need to work on this concept. You haven't quite understood it yet. In addition, people ask questions yes. from the audience, which perhaps you've not thought about. Mm-hmm. So that makes your understanding more thorough. Mm-hmm. So I use teaching as a way to become a better student. And I use teaching as a way of service. I see. Okay. And uh, the last way I use teaching is... Uh, to prepare a session, I try and look at it afresh. I don't try and give the same presentation. I see. I try and think of the audience. I get a feel of the people. When I go to a different country, get a feel of the people, see how best to connect with them. But also, I look and study every morning. And in that time, when I'm working on myself, if I find an angle that is useful or inspiring, I would make a note of it and put it into the lecture. Oh, I see. So it's a constant dynamic refinement improvement. How long have you been teaching Vedanta? 20 years. 20 years? You've been teaching Vedanta 20? So what, after you finish your three years, you start teaching right ahead? My teacher sent me. He said, oh. go to the nearby city. I wasn't traveling and speaking. Okay. I was talking in the nearby cities near in the India, academy. In India, okay. In India. So when did you start traveling? I started traveling. First, I started traveling with my teacher. Okay. More as uh, uh, following Swamiji as a mentor. I see. Now, imagine if uh, if you could travel with Roger Federer. Yeah. And yeah, you're yeah, an aspiring yeah. tennis yeah, player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, traveling with Swamiji, I could get to not just hear the lectures, but see how he interacts with different people. Of course. You know, CEOs, that's another, that's another people level. People coming for advice. Yeah. But even normal, normal 
interactions. Yes. Like with the staff, with the, um, a, a priest comes for advice. Yeah, the driver, the driver, the dr like, exactly. everything. You like, got it. Like yeah. the little details. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was absorbing that. Uh -huh. I was seeing how he interacts when the luggage gets lost, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like when the flight is delayed. Yes. I remember he's telling me we're at uh, Phoenix Airport. Uh -huh. The flight is delayed. And people are just, all the flights were delayed. Mm -hmm. And he said, Sadaka, look around. And I said, okay, I'm looking around. Uh -huh. And he said, you see everybody else? They all look so sad. Our group is the only group that's laughing. Learn to be lighthearted. Whether your plane is delayed or your plane is on time, mm -hmm. be lighthearted. Make the most of it. Yes. And we were all having a picnic, you know. Uh -huh. There was a group of us. And we were having a picnic. We were enjoying the delay. And that's what it is. So it was like a small lesson like that. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what I spent uh, quite a few years with Swamiji. And then in the last uh, decade or so, Avani and myself started traveling to organize lectures for Swamiji. Okay. So we would go to different parts of the world and we would arrange an event so that people could hear... Here is this wonderful treasure yes. that most of the world doesn't know about. <laughs> Here he is. He's dedicated his life to making this ancient wisdom simple and relatable. And he's given us, you know, this is what you mentioned, a curriculum mm -hmm. where you can go first book and you can go deeper yes. and deeper. There are and steps deeper. and yeah. order and... Right now, we, I mean, thankfully we have the internet, but everything is scattered all, all over. With this, there are steps, A, B, C, there are books, there, there is like a structure, which is which is actually the thing that I that I got my attention because like you said, I arrived to the academy, I saw you guys with the uniforms. I said, wow, what, what am I, you know? It looks a little intimidant and uh, it could it could put you ideas in your head of, of this, this could be a little bit weird. But then after the first lecture, the second one, I started talking with the people. I saw that all the information was very practical, very pragmatic, very down to earth. And they were talking about day a day uh, troubles. I remember the questions, the question sessions, the, those were great, man. A lot of group discussions. Yeah, group discussions yeah. And, and the questions that they were popping from previous readings and, and that they were popping one question and everybody was giving an answer. That for me, it was one of the top acti activities because... You get to you, you get to learn a lot out of maybe there was a 50 year old and there you have a 21 year old and everybody is like deep into the knowledge and trying to give the best out of it. It was really good. I, and there's no senior person. There's no junior person. No, 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 no. It is does what you're saying make yes, sense. Yes. And substantiate. Yes. And uh, it, it, I would say it's a evolution university, mm -hmm. like a university for self-development. Yes. I don't know why there hasn't been a place like this. If you think about it, we have it for medicine, we have engineering, we have accounting, yeah. first year, second year, third year, and you get a degree. But when it comes to life, man, I think, I think I, I don't want to sound like a psycho, but I think it's part of the program that the, that the system wants you, you know, because for the system for in general is whether that you are like a sheep. You got this, the ABC, you go uh, engineer. And, and what if I don't want to be an engineer? Like you say, what if I don't want to be a, a teacher or whatever? It's part of the process that everything is set. So if you don't challenge it, you just go, you know? And in that place, you challenge everything. You challenge systems, you challenge concepts, um, structures of thinking. And in general, the, the, for a government or for a big structures, they don't want you to do that. They want you to keep being a ship. So, yeah. so I think that most likely that could be a reason. But there are places. It is a reason. Yeah, it's a reason. It's so much easier to manage. Yes. If people are not thinking. Of course. You don't have to substantiate. You have no one to explain things to. Mm -hmm. But we don't realize the flip side of it is you don't get that person's full personality. No, at all. You and have you don't zombie. evolve the system. You have a zombie. Yeah. You have a zombie. And you don't improve. Yeah. Because you're not, you're not questioning, can it be done better? Yes. You, you, you know what? Even, uh, it's not even a matter of improving. Uh, well, yeah, it's a matter of improving, but I think that if you go deeper, it's a matter of living because, I mean, challenge yourself, ask yourself, do, do, do things different. They may look like you're insane of, 
how come you go to India to three years and then, uh, but you're living, you know, it's, it's you're deciding to experience something that is completely out of the model that you were supposed to live. And for me, that's life. That's the greatest thing you can do. Uh, people expect you to do something, expect you to have this job, expect you to have these earnings, expect, expect, expect. And what about you? What about that artist that is there? What about that, that, uh, 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 meaning of life that you were born the self. What about that spirit? Uh, maybe it's not, it's, it's, it's in a place where it's not experiencing what it's meant to be here in this planet. You know, you're not getting the full life. Uh -huh. And so I have a story for you along the same lines. It's that, uh, when I was in high school, uh, my colleague and I, we would compete mm -hmm. in school to see who would be the first in academics. In grades. In grades. Okay. And, uh, so we were always in the top three. Mm -hmm. So we finished school and I took the road less traveled uh -huh. and I went and did the three year course uh -huh. at the Vedanta Academy. My friend, because he did so well in school, mm -hmm. he went into medicine. Mm -hmm. He became the top student in his university and he became a neurologist, one of the leading neurologists in the city. Wow. And uh, we would meet mm -hmm. when I was, whenever I was in South Africa for lectures or touring with my teacher, he would come, he would come for the lecture. He would spend some time with me. He made the effort. Uh -huh. And about 17 years in, mm -hmm. 17 years uh -huh. later, later, he gives me a call and he says, Sadaka, I want to come to India. I want to do the course. So I'm thinking he wants to come for the short course. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. come for a week, mm -hmm. do one of the retreats. Yes. He says, so I said, yeah, sure. You can come in December for the retreat. He's like, no, Sadaka, I want you to do the three year course. And I'm convincing him. Hey man, what are you, what are you thinking? You've got a, you've got a practice. You're a neurologist. Your yes. career is blossoming. And he's like, if I don't come now, I'll never get this chance again. I want to come. He's like, now he came. Top neurologist, my friend. Uh -huh. He did the three-year course at the T4. He did the course. Uh -huh. He went back. And you know what he did? Exactly the same thing. But he said it was all the difference. Because now he knows why he's doing it. Oh. Now it's his decision. Now he's decided. Now he's got a purpose for life. Purpose. So he's doing exactly the same activity, but he's looking forward to it. Mm. He's enjoying it. He's not stressed. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the power of getting people to think. Mm -hmm. They may not have a different decision. Yes. But the fact that they've thought about it, then decided. But now well, it may change the reason why you are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the purpose. Now, uh, You've been traveling many places around the world to, to cultures that are way so different of what we're used to, to live, like India. You know, you are in Dominican Republic, USA, etc. How have you seen uh, all these cultures? How have they received Vedanta, Vedanta philosophy? Uh, what, what feedback have you received from us, from all these parts of the world? Overwhelmingly positive. Always. Always positive. Always. When I say always positive, mm -hmm. 90%. 90%. Okay. You will get a person who's studied philosophy or is a little bit cynical, maybe sees the uniform as a, as a cult or as a, trying to convert uh -huh. you in a religious way. Mm -hmm. And once they give me a chance and hear and ask their questions, most of them come around. Come around, yeah. And the thing is, because it is dealing with the human mind and intellect. And the more we travel, the more we realize how all people are the same. They have the same problem. Whether it be in Bolivia or Belgium yeah, or true. Beijing, it is that same mind getting attached to the partner, getting attached <laughs> to the child, getting involved in work. Yes. It's the same problem. Uh -huh. So when you speak this philosophy and it resounds with its truth of experience, people get it. They click yeah. and they see the value in it. Yes. Some people who want to find negativity, they do. They're yes. looking for some loophole, some flaw to catch you on. 
And it's okay. It's okay. Because we're not trying to convince. Yes. Our idea is share. There's this manual for life. Uh-huh. If you read it, it could make life easier. That's about it. I'm not asking you to change anything. I'm not saying you got to put a tag there. I'm a Vedanta student. No, you be you. Yes. And this might benefit you and you take it at your own pace. Now, uh, do you have like a personal story uh, that you can share in that happened to you maybe at the beginning of your Vedanta experience that completely changed or shaped the way you see the world that's happened where you were uh, through the Vedanta road? Through the Vedanta road? That's a very good question. And I'm trying to think of an experience that comes because there have been so many of these little moments mm -hmm. that where it just opens your eyes yes. to what you're seeing. Yes. One that comes to mind right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Okay. It, it may not be the most powerful, but it was something that at the time made me realize that part of getting closer to the spirit. Mm -hmm. And some people think about it in different ways. Mm -hmm. They think about it as, as God. Uh -huh. They think about it as the universe. Mm -hmm. They think about it as energy. Yes. So I'm trying to relate more with that part of my personality. Mm -hmm. All right. The spirit, the God within me. Yes. So in India, they have this convenience where uh, outside on the streets, There are people with the uh, little shops mm -hmm. where they do the ironing mm -hmm. and they use this massive iron, which they put coal in uh -huh. and it irons the clothes. Okay. So I had an appointment. My uniform was not ironed. So I said, okay, I'll go downstairs. Yes. I come downstairs. I give my clothes to the person who's ironing and I decided to wait there because uh -huh. I needed the clothes. So the person is there in his, his shop, mm -hmm. but that shop is also his home. And I'm seeing kids around, about three kids. Uh -huh. And he's living in that one space with different bundles of clothes that he needs to iron. His family is cooking on the one side. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, how can this guy in such poverty, how can this guy ever think about higher thoughts, about philosophy, yes. about spirit within, self-realization, enlightenment, God? How can this guy think about God? He's only thinking, he can only think about earning. Yes. This is what I'm thinking as I'm watching him. How old you were? I was about 25. 25, okay. 25. So I've been uh, with this subject for mm. some time. But this is what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, like is this, is philosophy only for, for people who are comfortable? Mm -hmm. And then when I'm seeing this person, I'm watching the way he's ironing. It's like an artist. Mm -hmm. Michelangelo painting. Yes. He's ironing the beautiful lines on the sleeve. He's turning it. He's, it's, it's an art form, the way mm -hmm. he's doing it. So pristine. And then he, you know, he puts a, a sheet of newspaper on it. So it's easy to package and doesn't get creased. Hands it over to me. And I give him the, the cash for in payment uh, for the ironing. He takes the cash and he touches his iron. With the cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, not underneath, so it gets burnt. He uh -huh. just he touches the iron and then he points the cash to the sky and then puts it in his pocket. Okay. And I realized this guy is more spiritual, more evolved than me. Mm -hmm. Because he's thinking about the spirit, the enlivening principle in him. Yes. More often than me. Every time he's doing his work, his activity. He's, he's thankful. He's thankful. Uh -huh. He's like... I am powered yes. to do this ironing because of that power from above or from within. Mm -hmm. And he's remembering that constantly. Yes. And I'm saying, it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. If you want to be a person who's aligned to their true spirit, to be truly spiritual, it's where is your mind? Where are your thoughts? Yes. And if your thoughts are on the spirit, that makes you spiritual. Yes. If your thoughts are on your intellect, you become intellectual. You with ideas and beliefs. And what is the Republican saying? What are the Democrats saying? If your thoughts are on emotions, you know, Eduardo, yes. you didn't greet me today. <laughs> you didn't say good morning. You know, you don't care about me. Then you're emotional. If your thoughts are on the body, 
You're physical. Physical. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts are on matter, material. Yes. But if your thoughts are on the spirit, spiritual. Do you think that it's much better to have our uh, thoughts uh, towards or leaning towards the spirituality or do you think ba- that balance is the key? Spiritual is where the happiness is. I see. So yes, it will be much yeah. yes. So that's where we want to get all our thoughts to. Okay. But okay. spiritual should be in and through everything that we do. Mhm. So we can enjoy the best of things. We can enjoy our vacation, we can enjoy a meal, we can enjoy our family, but behind it must be the spiritual. So it's not like this the spiritual world and material life. Mm-hmm. It should be one and the same. I see. I see. So driving a beautiful car or interacting with a beautiful person. How can we make that experience instead spiritual. of Yeah, exactly. I That's see. it. And and how can we make it like uh for example let's say um I, I for example in my case I love cars I love beautiful cars so how can I turn that experience into a spiritual let's say I buy a beautiful car I'm driving it and how can I manage not to be conquered by my ego and still and still of having an ego centric experience to have a spiritual experience it would be like the thoughts that I'm having like thank Thank, thanks to thank thank you God to give me the chance to have this car or how how would I manage that because it could be a thin line you know in, especially men that we are driven by all these shallow things that life has how how could you turn that into a spiritual experience so it's yes like how you put it it's where your thought is uh-huh. so you could practice gratitude uh-huh. like uh, I'm so thankful to have this experience to have this car to be able to drive but higher than that could be just as i'm using fuel mm-hmm. to power this car uh-huh. right and this fueling this car is the is the petrol the diesel fueling this vehicle to move beautifully what's fueling me mm-hmm. that spirit is fueling me to move this to move that that spirit is moving everything yes so you've turned that thought into something spiritual or it yes. could be beautiful yes. you know like you can see the the dashboard the upholstery mm-hmm. gorgeous beautiful sports car it's looking so aesthetic but just as who designed yes a butterfly yes or a lily or a violet look at the the color look at the design mm-hmm. See, it becomes spiritual. Oh, that's nice, man. Yeah, yeah you, you you went deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now to to start wrapping it up. Yeah. Have you have you done uh, any um, sacrifices in this in this road? I mean, are there things that you have uh, that it was difficult for you to go through, like a sacrifice or a for or you did you forfeit something uh, important for you in order to be where you are right now? No. Because no. I'll tell you why. No, because I have chosen to do every aspect of it. Okay. So it was owning that choice mm-hmm. and saying that this choice means certain things. I would not be living at the same level of comfort mm-hmm. that I was living. So, for instance, I told you we're from a public transport company, mm-hmm. but I never used public transport in my life. Yes. And in <laughs> India. I was going for work, I was using the buses, mm-hmm. I was hitchhiking, I was using the local trains, mm-hmm. no a- air conditioning, sometimes you know not even space to stand. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm suspended yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's so congested. So, been through all that, but I never felt it as sacrifice or the discomfort of it because I own the choice. I see. So, I looked forward to that work and the goal made it worthwhile. I see. And the goal for me was making this knowledge available and getting closer to self-realization. The goal was so important that those things really didn't matter it, at yeah, all. It doesn't matter. Like I when see. you came to the academy. Yeah. It's like the food was a bonus. Yes. But you were there for the experience. Yeah, well, actually I didn't have a problem with the food. Yeah, I, yeah the food's pretty good. I I, I really enjoyed yeah. it. I mean, I, and people it was funny because they keep asking me, "How do you see the food?" because I think it's not that the food is bad, but it's so different of what people from other countries are used to but no I had I had a good a good time with the food and now um, my last question would be for you uh, Suka uh, let's uh, we just have the experience that you went to the school and you give this uh, beautiful lecture 
And I start seeing not everybody, but a lot of people with the eyes like that, they're very interested. Let's say that there is somebody that is very interested in to dive, to give a, a dive into the Vedanta world and the Vedanta philosophy, but they do not know how to start. What would you recommend? I would say start with the first book. With the first book. It's small. It's easy to read. Mm -hmm. It's called The Fall of the Human Intellect. Uh -huh. And there's a, a version in Spanish available. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. that is very useful. And start with there and see if it's talking to you, if okay. it's the right language for you. And then look at the next step. Okay. Maybe talk to you, talk to me, mm -hmm. see how to take the interest forward. Because it's not easy to get to India. At the same time, it's not difficult. But coming to India, then you really see at the academy how great life can be. Yes. You can be productive, peaceful, happy. And that th that combination, it's very rare. Yes. When people are busy and productive, they're stressed. And then they're looking for distractions for their stress. Mm -hmm. So how do you enjoy life the whole way through? And I think that's what this subject can offer people. And a good place to find out about the books or the retreats or just some lectures by Swamiji or by myself mm -hmm. is uh, Vedantan dot online. Okay. Vedantan is a person who practices Vedanta. Oh, okay. That's a person who practices Vedanta. Yeah. Okay. Vedantin. Like India, Indian. Yes. Vedantin. Dominica, Dominican. Dominican. Okay. Yeah. So you're a Vedantin. Yeah. Okay. Vedantan dot online. Okay. Well, Sukha, thank you so much for your time. I have a really nice time. It was very, uh, I, the, the, the knowledge that you shared today with us, uh, hopefully touches many people, uh, that we are in this part of the world and, um, they use the, the, they use this as a tool to improve themselves and just get happier, you know, and get happier and get a purpose and get a knowledge of how to handle their intellect. That's, that I think was the, That was like the key of the of the academy. I remember is how to handle your intellect. So you got if, you, it. if you are more interested, yeah, we're gonna put in the in the video in the description the websites, uh, so you can just log in. And thank you so much, Suka. It was a pleasure to have you here. Man. Thank you, Eduardo. Yes, great thank you so much. Thank you.